Welcome back to HVAC Shop Talk. My name is Zach Ciota. Today we're going to talk about line sets again, but we're going to expand on the subject a little bit. A lot of you guys were wondering about equivalent length of line sets because you can say that this line set is 100 foot long, linear feet. But then every line set and every system has fittings, and each fitting has different possibilities for what you could put in its place. For example, long radius and short radius elbows, which we're going to talk about. So that's what we're going to do today on HVAC Shop Talk. We're going to talk a little bit of copper fittings and line sets. Field Pulse is the number one FSM platform for its ease of use, ease of setup, and quality of support. And what's more, they have a brand new promotion. Anybody who signs up by April 30th gets three months for free. Make sure when you take advantage of this particular program, you go to our link and use it. So go to the description and use it. That way the Field Pulse guys know it came from this channel. On this chart, you can see the title of equivalent length of straight type L tubing for non-ferrous valves and fittings. That sounds attractive, I know. But it's going to give us an idea of how much linear feet each one of these fittings add to a line set. And what you can do perhaps to alter the line set to make it a little bit easier to pump that refrigerant through, make the compressor's life a little bit longer, perhaps. On the left side of the chart, you can see tubing size and in inches ranging from one half inch all the way up to two and five eighths inch. We'll probably concentrate on the least and greatest just to give you guys an idea of the variety you might see out there in the field and its effect depending on the size. So let's start first with the solenoid valve. I put a picture of a solenoid valve on the screen. We're not going to go into the functions of every single one of these pictures that I show you guys, but just imagine you've seen these things before. Many times in refrigeration, these things are used to pump down a system. And in HVAC, I've used them personally in long line set applications where the compressor oil return and just the life of the compressor is being concentrated on when you have an extended line set. So you might see these in HVAC or in commercial and definitely in refrigeration. So going back to our chart, let's take a look at the tubing size and in inches of half inch tubing. If we go to solenoid valve, we're looking at the equivalent length in feet. You can see also for our worldly friends, meters are next to the feet. So I'll read the feet and the meters for anyone who's overseas or basically in any other country. For a half inch tubing size, the equivalent length for a solenoid valve is 12 foot. That is a very significant difference. 12 foot as compared to something that's just a few inches long. And in meters, that's 3.7 meters. If we go all the way up to the 2 and 5 eighths line size, that jumps up to 21 equivalent feet or 6.4 meters. Now this is food for thought. In every different system, you read the manual, you figure things out. This is given to you so you can kind of keep it in mind the impact the fittings make on your line set and system. So let's take a look at the angle valve. A lot of you guys may not know it as the angle valve. I know I don't know it as an angle valve, but I'm going to show you a picture of this valve on the screen so you can get familiar with it. On the screen, I'm showing you a couple of angle valves. You might have seen these they're very common in attaching to the compressor discharge and suction sides. A lot of you guys have seen these in refrigeration. I know in commercial and refrigeration, you're going to see these angle valves a little bit more often than we would see them in residential. It's just what you assume it might be. It's a valve where the flow of refrigerant goes at a 90 degree angle and the valve is mounted basically at the 180. It might be difficult to imagine. Just imagine a T at the top of that T. On the right or left, you'll have your valve shut off. The angle valve doesn't have quite the impact on the half inch tubing size as a solenoid valve. As you can see, it's 8.3 feet of equivalent length at half inch, that's 2.5 meters. And for reference, half inch is 13 millimeters. But if we jump all the way up to the two and five eight size, which you big boy refrigeration guys might be more familiar with, that's 54 millimeter tubing. It goes from 8.3 all the way up to 35.4. So in this case, the angle valve presents more of a restriction to flow for the large tubing than for the smaller tubing. As you can see, the smaller tubing, the solenoid valve was 12 and the angle valve was 8.3. That's 3.7 meters and 2.5 meters. But if you go up to two and five eighths, 
it goes from 21 feet for the solenoid valve, 6.4 meters, to 35.4 feet, or 10.8 meters. That is a significant jump instead of a significant reduction. So depending on what size of pipe you guys use, the impact is going to change. So you'll have to be vigilant for whatever size tubing you're using because there's no one size fits all thought that you can keep in the back of your head between the solenoid valve and the angle valve. So something I think we can all be familiar with is short radius elbows and long radius elbows. I'm going to show you a picture on the screen just in case someone is new to the trade and doesn't know exactly what I'm talking about. You can see on the screen there's a short radius and long radius elbow. Now on this particular picture, I have just a standard copper elbow for the short radius and it looks like a press fitting for the long radius, but the illustration is just the same. The throat is the difference. The long radius has a long sweeping inside and outside throat, meaning it's a nice curved, long, slow bend, more gentle for the flow of refrigerant. If you look at the short radius, it's almost at a 90 degree on the inside of the throat. A sharp turn, more restriction, more buildup, more turbulence, and just in general, a worse way for your refrigerant to travel than the long radius elbow. Just like in ductwork, it's the very same thing. Those of you who run ductwork, you can draw some really strong parallels between what we're talking about with the copper fittings and what we design in a duct system. If you're familiar with manual D, you'll know that when air is going into a distribution system of whatever type, if you use a Y, it's going to be a lot easier on that airflow than a T, a bullhead T. Bullhead T meaning you have air coming into the T and then the two branches going out. So it's basically a 90 degree turn either way. Anything you can do to cause less restriction is going to increase the life of your system and make your system run more efficiently. Going back to the chart, we can see short radius elbow and long radius elbow. At the half inch size or 13 millimeters, the short radius elbow doesn't add a whole lot. It's 1.6 equivalent feet. That's half a meter. For long radius elbow, it's actually one. So it's just a standard, doesn't really make much of a difference. But if you go down to the 2 and 5 8 size, it's a little bit more pronounced, not as severe, not nearly as severe as the solenoid valve and angle valve. So a short radius elbow at the 2 and 5 8 or 54 millimeters is 5.3 feet equivalent or 1.6 meters. The long radius elbow is 3.5 feet or 1.1 meters. So in the grand scheme of things, what we've been talking about, the short radius elbow and long radius elbow are not as significant but still significant enough where you can contemplate using a long radius elbow on your jobs. So last but not least, we have the T line flow and T branch flow. Now this is like the short radius and long radius elbow, not as pronounced as the solenoid valve and angle valve. But if you think about it, you're probably going to have more of these in a system than the solenoid valve or angle valve. Although the elbows and the T's have a less significant effect on the equivalent length, there can be so many of them, sometimes more than 10 in a system, where they can add up to be just as significant as a solenoid valve or the angle valve. So this is our T right here. And when we're talking about line flow, we see our T. Just imagine the letter T. For any of you who might be just listening, imagine the letter T. And a line flow is going to be coming in from the top left and entering the other two pipes. So the one going 90 degrees down and the one going straight across. So we have line flow heading in here just like this, and it's going to go down and keep on going straight. That is less resistance than we have with a branch flow T. With a branch flow T, we have it entering the bottom of the T, and it's going to deadhead here. So you have that chance for just more resistance, more turbulence, and then it's going to divide up going, of course, left and then right. So basically... It's more of a turbulent, violent way for a refrigerant to flow than if it just flowed in from the end. Now, I think one of the main issues with the line flow T would be distribution of refrigerant. Now, just imagine we have our T right here, and if it flows in from the line side, you're going to think that more of it's going to continue going straight across and less of it's going to continue going this way. So you might have an issue with refrigerant distribution if you're just splitting off. Sizing your line set appropriately would make a lot more difference in this case than it would be with the branch flow T. So looking at the line flow T for half inch size or 13 millimeters, it's one equivalent foot. So it has very little effect, if any. 
If we go to two and five eighths or 54 millimeters, it goes at the 3.5 equivalent foot or 1.1 meters. So not tremendous, but it does make a little bit more of a difference. If we go to the branch flow T, it goes from 3.1 equivalent feet. So you can see it's significantly higher, not tremendous compared to solenoid valves and angle valves, but they would add up if you use several of them. So it ranges from 3.1 equivalent feet for the half inch or 13 millimeter, that's 0.9 meters, all the way up to 10.7 equivalent feet or 3.3 meters for the two and five eighths pipe. So more of a significant difference right there that would add up if you use several of them. I hope this helps you guys eliminate some future issues in your refrigerant systems, gives you just an awareness of what putting all these fittings in a system can do to the system. And just imagine some of these things might be just best practices that you can think about while you're creating a system. Maybe you avoid having to use some short radius elbows and you incorporate long radius elbows. I think we've covered enough for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular episode, and I will see you guys on the next one. And as always, God bless all of you.